this is the second lecture of the course MTH204A for section B. In this lecture, we will talk about alternating groups. Uh, to begin with, we first recall the definition of uh, symmetric groups. Given any non-empty set X by a symmetry on uh, by a symmetry of X, I mean a one one onto mapping from X to X, and the set of all such mappings uh, forms a group with respect to composition of functions. This group is denoted by S X, and uh, uh, it is called as the symmetry group of X. Also in the literature, we call bijective mappings from X to X uh, as permutations. So therefore, uh, uh, some authors call the instead of symmetric group, some authors call this group uh, as the permutation group of X. Uh, now, when uh, for when X is one up to n, where n is a positive integer. Uh, it is customary to denote the corresponding symmetric group of uh, this set by Sn. As I said, it is a group under composition of uh, functions. Uh, now, also recall that every permutation of uh, every symmetry of this set can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. And since uh, any cycle can be written as a per product of uh, transpositions, of course, now they are no, no longer going to be disjoint in general. So since uh, uh, any cycle can be written as a product of transpositions, so consequently one obtains that every permutation, every symmetry of uh, this uh, set 1 up to n, where n is any natural number, is a product of uh, transpositions. Again, let me remind you that uh, now we cannot insist that the transpositions will be disjoint. We now talk about the sign character of Sn for any n. So we prove the following theorem that given any natural number n, there is a unique homomorphism from Sn to the multiplicative group plus minus 1 with the property that it sends every transposition to minus 1. So for each n, we have a unique we have a unique homomorphism. So this is uh, this homomorphism is called the sign homomorphism or sign character of S n. We now prove this. So it suffices to prove the existence because uh, of this condition. So what I mean by this is the following: that suppose we have two permutations epsilon epsilon prime with this property then if you take any uh, if you take any uh, permutation sigma we just write it as a product of uh, transpositions then since both is epsilon and epsilon prime are homomorphisms we see that epsilon sigma is minus 1 to the power k same, uh, say same as epsilon prime sigma so therefore we see that as long as this condition is there then automatically uh, uh, auto, uh, then automatically for every sigma, epsilon prime sigma will be same as epsilon sigma. So this shows that there can there can be at most one such sigma. Okay. So in view of this, it's enough to prove the existence. To show the existence, first we define the following that for any sigma, a, for any sigma, uh, a symmetry of uh, one up to n. We define epsilon sigma to be this product. So what uh, what is this product actually? You see that when i and since i and j are different, so sigma i and sigma j are certainly going to be different. Well, so, but what might happen that even if i less than j, sigma i might be greater than sigma j, or it may be less than uh, it may be less than sigma j. So in this product the terms which are appearing in the denominator so in this product so it's a product of uh, many terms so in that product the terms which are appearing in the in the numerator are exactly the same terms appearing in the denominator up to a plus minus sign okay that just depends upon uh, so the minus sign will appear when uh, sigma i happens to be when sigma i happens to be bigger than sigma j okay so, yeah, because in the denominator, all terms are written, are put, are put like this. So, uh, since uh, the terms uh, on the numerator are, 
are exactly same as the terms in the denominator up to a sign up to a plus minus sign so the this makes this product lie inside this uh, set okay so therefore we have we therefore we see that uh, this epsilon defined here indeed define this epsilon uh, of uh, any sigma where uh, epsilon and sigma defined uh, uh, defined here indeed defines a map from sn to plus minus 1 we now show that uh, this map epsilon defined uh, here this map epsilon preserves the group structure so to show that what we have to do is take any two permutations uh, sigma and tau and then uh, we are going to then we are uh, going to show that uh, epsilon of sigma compose tau is same as epsilon sigma times epsilon tau so what is this epsilon of sigma compose tau according to the definition this is going this is this now we just do a little bit uh, we will just do a little bit of manipulation so we in order to bring epsilon tau in this picture so we will uh, we will write this uh, rewrite this term uh, as uh, this so therefore uh, the so therefore this uh, product so this product is now uh, split into two further products so one uh, one is the product of terms uh, all terms like this and the second product is the product of all the terms of this form so this is what we get and uh, from the definition uh, if this is nothing but epsilon tau so uh, the entire thing become uh, entire thing becomes epsilon tau times the pro times this product now in order to show its homomorphism we will see that this term is nothing but epsilon sigma so how to show that this time this term is epsilon sigma so remember epsilon c in the epsilon sigma is itself defined as the product of some some terms of this form okay epsilon sigma is itself you know defined like this so in order so in order to show epsilon sigma is equals to this product what we will do is we will show that they are nothing but the uh, prod i mean uh, they are nothing but the products of the same terms that is to elaborate more any term here appears here and any term here appears here as well so uh, in, in uh, so in both the cases we are considering the same terms uh, while taking the product and that yields the products will be same this is what we are going to do so uh, to, uh, to see that every term here actually appears uh, in the in the actually appears in the list of terms who, which are present uh, uh, which are present in the product that defines epsilon sigma so what we do is if we take some i and j with i less than j then clearly there exist i prime and j prime such that sigma i prime is i and sigma j prime is j so now uh, we have two cases uh, if i prime less than j prime then uh, then the corresponding then then the corresponding term then the, the, the if if i prime is less than j prime then you then uh, uh, it's uh, uh, then this this uh, is nothing but sigma then then, then we uh, then we recognize this term in this product as this okay i repeat what i mean by this is so this term is among this this is uh, one of the typical terms which are present in the uh, product that defines epsilon sigma now if this i prime is less than j prime now we can find this product uh, we can find this term in this product in this product as this okay and uh, on the other and uh, if i prime is greater than j prime then uh, again we can find this term in this product as uh, we, we can we can we can recognize this term in this uh, in this list as this term okay and obviously any term of this form is automatically in any term of this uh, form uh, is automatically present uh, in this product as well okay so uh, 
this is just a simple manipulation like for any i and j so if tau tau i is less than tau j then uh, then this one can directly find that term here and if tau i is greater than tau j then we just uh, uh, multiply numerator and denominator by uh, uh, by minus 1 and then uh, the, the uh, then find then we are able to recall find this term here uh, here as well so therefore now we are convinced that for both these products so this product and the product which defines epsilon sigma in both these products the terms are precisely same so therefore the products will, must be the same so uh, Thus, from the star, we obtain that epsilon of sigma compose tau is epsilon sigma compose epsilon tau. Epsilon sigma pro, uh, uh, epsilon of sigma compose tau is epsilon sigma times epsilon tau. Okay, so this uh, this defines that we have uh, this defines that the epsilon defined here is indeed a homomorphism from S n to the multiplicative group plus minus one. Now we will verify that uh, uh, the, 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 the epsilon defined, uh, uh, def the epsilon that we have defined satisfies this property. So in order to, so while showing that, uh, my let me make this claim first that uh, it's enough to show epsilon of 1, 2 is minus 1. So this, uh, the, so this is, uh, the, we, uh, I can claim this in view of the following proposition. So what does this proposition say? This proposition just says that for in uh, for any natural number n and any r less or equal to n, any two r cycles in S n are conjugate to each other. Okay. So <laughs> we will prove this proposition. Before getting into the proof is this proposition, le, let me explain why this proposition, I mean, let me explain uh, how this proposition helps us to, uh, helps us to uh, uh, see that, uh, helps us to see why this is enough to conclude the value of epsilon at every, every transposition is minus one. Let's first see that. So it's easy. So, in fact, we will prove that if sigma and tau are two R cycles in S n, then uh, epsilon sigma and epsilon tau are going to be same. How to show that? So, in view of this proposition, uh, there exists a permutation lambda such that epsilon equal to such that sigma equal to tau uh, lambda tau tau inverse. Now the rest is just a direct uh, uh, verification that epsilon tau is nothing but epsilon of lambda tau, epsilon sigma is same as epsilon lambda tau sigma inverse. Then using the homomorphism property, we have this. Now we simply bring the bring this uh, uh, this uh, the bring this epsilon of lambda inverse here. This is what we can do because these are just uh, usual numbers. Now again, epsilon of uh, tau lambda times epsilon lambda inverse is nothing but epsilon lambda compose lambda inverse. And since epsilon is a homomorphism, this term has to be one. Therefore, we see that uh, uh, the uh, we see that for any two cycle R cycles uh, uh, for into R cycles uh, sigma and tau epsilon sigma and epsilon tau are going to be same. And this is this holds for any R less or equal to n. Okay, so uh, uh, this so this proposition indeed shows us that the value of so given this proposition indeed shows us that for any r the value of sigma on any r cycle will be the same. In particular, when r is two, uh, we uh, it it uh, prov provides us with the following that that uh, the value of this homomorphism of, uh, epsilon that we have uh, defined earlier, the value of that homomorphism does not change on any transposition, okay? So if we can show that this, show that this is minus one, then uh, for any transposition i and j, epsilon of i and j has to be minus one. Okay, so uh, we will prove the proposition now. So, how to prove the proposition? Uh, recall that in any group G, conjugation is an equivalence relation that is, uh, 
uh, if we define this relation that uh, x and y are said to be uh, related if for some if uh, if uh, uh, if and only if x equals to g y g inverse uh, for some g in g if we define a relation like this that x and y are said to be equivalent if they are conjugate to each other it's easy to see that this is an equivalence relation so in view of the the that uh, the conjugation uh, is an equivalence relation in, in any group so it's enough to show that any r cycle is conjugate to the standard r cycle 1 up to r okay so if you can prove that that shows any two r cycles will be conjugate to each other now in order to show this is conjugate to this so what uh, does that mean it means that we have to find a permutation lambda such that this becomes this so this becomes this r cycle okay so now how to uh, uh, how to construct this lambda we construct lambda as follows so for any uh, for uh, any i from 1 up to r we simply define lambda i to be ai now we have to define uh, uh, lambda r plus 1 up to lambda n so we define lambda r plus 1 is uh, as the minimum of uh, all elements in 1 up to n other than e1 up to ar okay so let me again re repeat what i am actually doing i have already assigned i to ai for all i uh, from 1 up to r now what if, now among the elements which have not been considered yet i choose uh, their minimum as the value of lambda at the point r plus 1 then in the, the next step, uh, lambda of r plus one, uh, r plus lambda of r plus two is defined to be the minimum of all the elements which have minimum of uh, uh, all the elements in one up to n which have not been considered till the r plus one -th step. Okay, so we continue like this, and uh, from our construction, it is uh, obvious that lambda is uh, lambda is a permutation and uh, then uh, we have, then we can immediate we can verify at once that lambda 1 uh, lambda uh, we can immediately verify that uh, the conjugation of the standard r cycle by lambda is nothing but this cycle which is according to uh, according to the definition of lambda is the given cycle a1 up to a this shows that uh, uh, like since any r cycle is conjugate to the standard r cycle and conjugacy is an equivalence relation so this shows that any two r cycles are conjugate to each other for every r less or equal to n so thus uh, the proof of the proposition is uh, now over so once we have established the proposition uh, now we will simply show that epsilon of 1 2 is minus 1 because we have already argued that uh, uh, once we once we can show this, then uh, uh, then uh, uh, the rest that is uh, epsilon of any transposition is minus one uh, follows uh, follows from this proposition, which we have uh, discussed here. Okay, now to compute epsilon of one two, so what we have to do is. We will see. We will uh, look. Uh, we will uh, uh, look at the terms. Uh, more look at the terms which appear in the definition of epsilon one two uh, more carefully. So the terms. Uh, so any typical term. Uh, any typical term that uh, appears in the definition of epsilon one two. Look. It any typical term looks like this. So. If i and j are totally disjoint from 1 to, then uh, you see this is nothing. So this term is, uh, I mean, any any such term where i and j are disjoint from 1 to, it's easy to see that uh, any such term is actually 1. So therefore, in the product, they are not contributing anything actually. Now, if i equal to 1, j equal to 2, that very particular term you can immediately say the see that uh, one two of one is two and one two of one is uh, one so uh, therefore uh, here it will be two minus one and the denominator one minus two so that gives us minus one 
okay so therefore uh, uh, i mean uh, we have all, we have considered the terms uh, where i and j are totally disjoint from 1 to and then on the other hand we have considered the ter considered the term i mean in fact this is the unique term when i equal to 1 j equal to 2 and the rest of the terms in that product can be divided into the following two groups so in one group we have all terms corresponding to i equal to 1 and j greater than 2 and uh, in the other group we have terms corresponding to i equal to 2 okay now uh, any typical term of the second uh, of the first group uh, is of the form okay is of this form so it is going to be any typical term of the first group is of this we can see that is of this form for j greater than 2 and similarly any typical term of the second group is of this form okay so now you see that uh, that if if if, if we uh, if we observe the terms in the first group and then the terms in the second group very clear carefully, we see that uh, corresponding to any term here, its reciprocal is present in the in the terms uh, uh, of the second group, and for every term in the second group, its reciprocal is present in the terms uh, uh, in the terms of the first group. Therefore, when I consider the product of all terms, for product of all terms, then what we get is the following. From here, I get 1. From, uh, from this terms, I get minus 1. And uh, from here and from here and uh, from this and this, we see that uh, this terms here and terms there, terms there, they will be cancelling each other. So ultimately the product of all such terms, uh, all such terms of the, from the first group and all such terms of the second group, we, we get uh, like the product of all such terms of the first group and all such terms of the second group, since they will be cancelling each other, we will get one. So thus, so here I have, here from here I get one, uh, from here I get minus one, and from the product of uh, these terms and these terms, ultimately I get 1. So therefore, the total product turns out to be minus 1. Alright. So that, uh, yeah. So therefore, we obtain that uh, epsilon of 1, 2 is minus 1. I have already argued that uh, in view of the proposition, by with the help of the proposition that once uh, uh, epsilon of 1, 2 is minus 1, and then uh, for any other two cycle, the epsilon's value is going to be uh, minus 1. So that uh, verifies this uh, property, uh, thus verifies of this property of the map epsilon. So let me again uh, briefly repeat. So first we prove that there can be at most one homomorphism epsilon uh, given any n of course with this property then uh, that we have first seen. Now we define epsilon uh, of sigma for any sigma to be this. So then we check that this way we indeed define a map, a homomorphism from S n to plus minus 1. Then we further verified that the value of this epsilon at any, transpos at any transposition is minus 1. Okay. It's now time to make the definition of alternating groups. So uh, uh, given any n, the kernel of the sign character epsilon is called the alternating subgroup, uh, uh, alternating subgroup uh, uh, of Sn, alternating subgroup of Sn, and we denote this by an. So I should have put this uh, alternate this Sn part here. Uh, well, so let me add it here. So alternating subgroup uh, of uh, Sn, yeah. And uh, as I said that uh, we will, uh, we denote this by An. So uh, what are, so uh, what, which permutation, so which permutations uh, uh, lie in the kernel. 
सो कर्नल सो हियर द कर्नल इज कर्नल कंसिस्ट ऑफ प्रिसाइसली दो परमुटेशंस सच दैट इफ साइलन ऑफ सच दैट इफ साइलन मैप्स देम टू वन राइट सो ना एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी ऑब्जर्व दैट if sigma is written as a product of uh, k number of transposition then epsilon sigma has to be minus 1 to the power k so if that means sigma lies in the kernel it means sigma can sigma can be written as a product of even number of transpositions and uh, uh, as and uh, uh, furthermore it can never be written as a product of odd number of transpositions so therefore kernel Uh, of this sign character a precise kernel precisely contains all the permutations which can be written as a product of even number of transpositions so that is the reason for which some uh, people uh, call the uh, member some people call the elements of an as even permutations okay uh this a uh, it's easy to see that this an has order is in this an has or the order n factorial by 2 because uh, since the map of silen is clearly subjective so from first isomorphism theorem we see that the an has index 2 in sn therefore this yields that this is the order of an so at this point i would like to leave the following exercise to you so uh from sn so from sn well so uh, let's go back to this epsilon so you can we can view this as a subgroup of uh, c star right c minus 0 with respect to multiplication so usually uh, usually this group, uh, this book is called as the this, this uh, is uh, denoted i mean by some authors this is denoted by c star so let's set up that here as well so uh this sign character is a homomorphism from sn to c star of course uh, there is we, of course we do have a trivial homomorphism from sn to c star so thus we have uh, two homomorphisms from sn to c star so in this exercise this exercise tells that these are the only homomorphisms these two homomorphisms are the only homomorphisms from sn to c star all right now we are going to prove the main uh, now we are going to prove the main result of this lecture this is uh, called the simplicity of an when n not equal to 4 so first let me uh, first let me define the notion of simplicity of a group so a group is said to be simple if its only normal subgroups are ident are the uh, uh, i mean the two extreme ones that is uh, the trivial one and the whole group so there is no non trivial proper subgroup which is no proper subgroup of g which is normal in g if so then only we will say g is simple let me give you some examples of uh, simple groups so this is uh, so for any prime p z modulo p z is simple and in fact it's easy to see that the these are precisely all abelian simple groups okay that's uh, uh, easy to see uh, i would encourage you to take this as an exercise now let's uh, come to now let's discuss uh, uh, the simple groups among the non abelian ones so uh, so what are the I mean, most common examples of non abelian groups so sn is one of the most common examples of non abelian groups but sn cannot be simple because it has an okay and then the group of matrices gln of, of over any field but this is also cannot be simple because gln has sln n sln f so this is the subgroup of all matrices or with entries from f with determinant 1 and that's easy to see that uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, normal subgroup of gln f there so therefore general linear groups that cannot be a uh, simple group now what about like inside gln we have 
inside gln we have a uh, sln right now what about uh, sln is that normal similarly inside sn we have an so what about so uh, again yeah so inside gln there is sln so that prevents SL gln from being simple but what about sln is it simple the similar question arises in the context of symmetric groups is the following that inside sn there is an so is an simple uh, actually in case of linear groups uh, uh, this is not the case so let's take the most simplest one let's say sl2 and for simplicity let's take the field to be the field of real numbers sl2r is not simple because it's, it it has a normal subgroup it has a non trivial normal subgroup namely the uh, plus minus identity so uh, because of the presence of this normal subgroup sln cannot be simple now the question is if i just uh, uh, like uh, quotient the sln by this normal subgroup what about this so this group is called PSL2R uh, and uh, we, we will uh, in this lecture, uh, prove, not in this lecture, in this course, later on we will prove that PSL2R is simple. Uh, well, uh, uh, hmm, there is nothing holy about two. Uh, one can define PSLNs uh, for any general N and they also turn out to be simple. But uh, uh, for the time being, uh, let's not get into the let's not get into those things. So uh, yeah, so I just uh, mentioned this uh, uh, PSL two R in this list of examples. The proof will be given later. Now let's uh, come to uh, alternating groups. So when n not equal to four, n is simple. We will prove that in this uh, lecture. So uh, you see that SN cannot be simple because SN has AN. Now whether AN is simple or not that is answered by this uh, that will be answered uh, uh, there, uh, in this lecture. So the answer is when N not equal to 4 AN is simple and then we will show that A4 is not simple. Okay so let's uh, prove this now the simplicity of a n when n, uh, n not equal to 4. So to prove the simplicity of a n for n not equal to 4, we first uh, 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 prove the following, th we plus prove the following uh, uh, two things. So the first uh, one is a proposition that says when n is greater or equal to 5, any two three cycles are conjugate in S n. So before getting into the proof, let me explain what, uh, let me explain the point I would like to make. So if you take any two, three cycles, of course, they'll be conjugate inside SN. That means there will be a, uh, there will be a permutation lambda, uh, there will be a permutation lambda such that this, uh, such that this happens, right? There will be a permutation. Now the question is whether this permutation lambda comes from uh, AN or not. If this comes from a n, then we will see the, then uh, we can say that uh, a, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 3, 2, they are not only conjugate in s n, they are also conjugate in a n. Because first of all, since both are co contained in a n, so uh, it is very natural to ask whether they are conjugate in a n as well or not. Uh, but uh, in general, for example, uh, yeah, so it's natural to ask whether the, these two things are con conjugate in n or not. Uh, when n equal to 3 or 4, these two, the, these two 3 cycles, though they are conjugate in S3 or S4 respectively, but they are not going to be conjugate in A3 or A4. So this proposition does not, the uh, statement in this proposition does not hold when n equal to 3 or 4. And uh, the reason for which it holds when greater or equal to 5 is precisely the presence of enough extra elements. In fact, in the, in, in the proof, uh, we, we will see that the, the, the presence of uh, enough extra elements that plays the main role. Okay. 
so let me prove this proposition so uh, always as we have already discussed that uh, conjugates in any group conjugates is an equivalence relation so thus is enough to show uh, the enough to show that any three any arbitrary three cycle is conjugate to one to three uh, so we what we do is we consider the, the both these inside s3 uh, yeah so not exactly s3 we, we consider both these inside sn so when we consider bo both this one abc and one two three inside sn then uh, uh, as inside sn any two cycles of the same length are conjugate to each other so we go we do have a lambda in sn such that this happens now if this lambda happens to be in an then we are done otherwise what we have to do is so uh, if this lambda is not from a n that means it has to be odd we have to then make it even so how to make an odd permutation even the natural approach is we will uh, multiply that we will multiply that uh, odd permutation by a transposition but while doing that we have to be careful that uh, the this when we multiply a b when we multiply lambda by this new transposition then that should not disturb this so so this is what we have to take care and uh, uh, that immediately tells us that uh, what are the appropriate choices for a and b since n is greater or equal to 5 of course 4 and 5 are there in uh, in that set so therefore if we take so if we take 4 5 or again there is nothing holy about 4 5 we just need two uh, two points a and b which are not we just need two points a and b which are not one two or three as long as we can find two such points then once we multiply lambda by once we multiply lambda by this then this is going to be even permutation so and this works so to be concrete as i said that we consider lambda prime to be four five times lambda and then it's just immediate that uh, for this lambda prime lambda prime abc lambda prime inverse is one two three so you see that uh, as i said uh, the uh, 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 the reason for which the, this uh, uh, statement is true when in, when in greater equal to five is precisely the uh, existence of enough extra elements okay so here uh, uh, all that we need is just uh, some uh, uh, points a and b which are other than uh, uh, one two and three so to be to, to be somewhat explicit we can take four five okay so as, I, as an immediate corollary of this we obtain the following that when n is greater equal to five then whenever a normal subgroup contains a three cycle then it contains all three cycles because any two three cycle, so in any two three cycles, any two three cycles are conjugate inside a n. The next thing that we need is the following lemma. So for this lemma, we don't have any restriction on n. N is just uh, any uh, a positive integer greater or equal to three. So if uh, and uh, this what uh, the lemma says that a n is always generated by three cycles. So how to prove that? So recall that every element, every element in n, every even permutation uh, is uh, by definition a product of even number of transpositions. So uh, therefore, uh, if we can prove that the product of uh, the product of uh, uh, any two transpositions is either a three cycle or a product of some three cycles, then in view of this, we have what we obtain is any permutation becomes a product of any permutation even permutation of course becomes a product of uh, some three cycles okay well like here also i don't insist that the, these three cycles will be disjoint in fact most likely it is not going to be the case okay so uh, as i said that we will uh, show that uh, the product of any two transpositions is either a three cycle or product of th some three cycles so if the transpositions have one uh, uh, i mean have one element in common 
then uh, their product becomes this three cycle if they are totally disjoint then it is easy to see that their product is the product of these two three cycles so that finishes uh, the proof of this lemma now uh, this lemma coupled with this corollary uh, provides us the following that when n is greater or equal to 5 if a normal subgroup of n contains a three cycle then there is no ch other choice for that normal subgroup uh, there is no other choice for the normal subgroup okay so why so because whenever there is a whenever there is a three cycle then it contains all three cycles when n greater or equal to 5 and uh, in the lemma shows that uh, if a subgroup has all three if a subgroup contains all three cycles then their subgroup must be a n okay so now uh, let's prove the uh, main theorem of this lecture so this is uh, the theorem says that when is n is greater equal to 5 then a n is simple so as I said that uh, he, our aim is to show that when n is not equal to uh, 4 then n is simple. So uh, for a, any n greater or equal to 5 the simplicity is guaranteed by this theorem. Now the only case which is left is n equal to 3. It's easy to see that a, a3 is nothing but uh, a3 is uh, uh, isomorphic to z modulo 3z. So it's already it is obviously simple. So this uh, theorem together with the uh, together with this obvious simplicity of uh, a3 uh, with this two we get with this two we establish this all right now to prove the simplicity of uh, to prove the simplicity of uh, a n when n greater equal to 5 so we start with a normal subgroup of a non-trivial normal subgroup of a n we would like to show that a this normal subgroup n has to be a n now uh, it's enough to show that n contains a three cycle in view of this okay so we will try to see uh, try to uh, show that n indeed has a three cycle so here the key observation is uh, is uh, three cycles uh, fix uh, maximum number of points in one up to n among all the non-identity permutations let me again explain if uh, if a permutation a non-identity permutation uh, if uh, it is a three cycle then you see that uh, it uh, apart from the three points it fixes uh, all other points now if you take an even permutation which is not a three cycle then uh, it's immediate that it will it, it it has to move more than three points so therefore we see that among all the non identity perm identity permutations three cycles are uh, the ones which which fix maximum number of points of one up to n so this motivates us to proceed like this that uh, among the non-identity elements in N, I will pick up uh, one which fixes maximum number of uh, points of 1 up to N. And then my aim will be to show that permutation is, that permutation is a three cycle. Okay. All right. To have a better understanding of the technique used in this proof, so before going ahead, let me tell you that this proof is due to Evarist Tagale. This is just a stroke of his genius. So to have a better understanding of the technique which is being used in this proof, we first work out the very special case n equal to 5. In this special, I mean, you see that this is the most, uh, I mean, uh, in this statement, this is the most basic case. So in that uh, basic most case uh, because of the presence of uh, only five elements things become much more easy to see and sometimes more uh, uh, concrete for us so in that situation when we work out the proof we will uh, we will uh, uh, we will uh, observe very carefully that uh, uh, how the things are done and why uh, the uh, I mean, how, how the things work and why the things work we will observe them carefully and that will help us to understand uh, the strategy better 
and in the general case uh, the strategy is exactly the same of course we have to uh, modify appropriately okay so uh, as i said i will first uh, uh, prove the base case to have a better understanding so uh if uh, this uh, if uh, well so de uh, let's denote uh, as i said that i will pick up an element from n which fixes maximum number of points a non identity element of course let's denote uh, the that by sigma so when n equal to 5 if sigma is not a three cycle then there are only two choices Uh, then, then there are only two choices for sigma. So either it's a five cycle or it is a product of two disjoint transpositions. Okay. So if this is a five cycle, then what happens? So let it, let the five cycle be A B C D E. So uh, our strategy is to cook so from this so from this sigma our strategy is to cook up a new element of course a non identity element in n which fixes more number of points than that of sigma okay so let's try to fix a so sigma moves a to b we try to we try to fix a so what should be the most natural way so the most natural way that comes immediately in our mind is we should apply sigma inverse right we should apply sigma inverse but of course once we apply sigma inverse uh, then a will be fixed but the problem is uh, uh, once you once you multiply by sigma inverse from the left then you will end up uh, having identity that you don't want that uh, you you cannot consider right so this uh, i mean so this uh, idea of multiplying the by sigma inverse that uh, does not work uh, just like this unless we unless we do something more so what we will do here is so in order to prevent uh, uh, the result being identity after multiplying by sigma inverse in order to prevent that we will Uh, we will change the arrangement of these three elements okay so uh, uh, how to change the arrangements of uh, let's say these three elements so earlier we have seen that conjugation does such things so we consider this three cycle c d e and then consider uh, the sigma conjugate consider uh, tau sigma tau inverse from normality uh, certainly uh, tau sigma tau inverse which is uh, which is easily seen to be this is a member of n okay so thus uh, by conjugation we array we change the positions of uh, of this three uh, of this three uh, elements in that five cycle now when i multiply this by sigma inverse certainly i am not going to get identity right and uh, on the top of that since uh, i have just changed the arrangements of these points a and b are left i mean a a is not being touched so uh, now when i multiply by sigma inverse certainly then a is going to be fixed okay so thus uh this is my non identity element in uh, the normal subgroup n which fixes the point uh, which uh, uh, which fixes the point a which is certainly a contradiction because uh, the because this uh, has more number this is a non identity non identity permutation which fixes more points than sigma okay in the other case when sigma is the product of two disjoint transpositions the strategy is simple so uh, here also uh, we change the positions we, here also we do something with these two elements so uh, since uh, so uh, well here uh, yeah so we first choose a fifth element we choose uh, we we choose the fifth element because already four elements are being considered so let e be the fifth element and as uh, earlier we considered tau to be this 
now tau sigma tau inverse is nothing but uh, sigma inverse a b and uh, so a b is not going to be so when consider so when consider tau sigma tau inverse certainly that is not going to uh, touch a b rather this will change the second transposition by uh, transposition c d to d e now in the now with this when i multiply by sigma inverse certainly that is going to fix both a and b and uh, of course this is not going to be identity so here also we arrive at a contradiction the proof of now we will go for the proof of the general case so the proof of the general case goes along the same line but here we have to be somewhat more careful because more uh, uh, because uh, more uh, points are present so uh, right sigma is the product of disjoint cycles so now we can uh, we can say uh, that uh, only so now we can say that uh, the following are the only two possibilities for sigma so what are the possibilities so either all sigma i either all sigma i's are transpositions or there is a sigma i whose length is at least 3 okay here like uh, unlike n equal to 5 here i cannot say that uh, sigma has to uh, either here i cannot say something like that sigma can be uh, sigma will be some n cycle or something that i cannot uh, uh, ascertain so all that we can see is say is either all the trans sigma is a transpositions or there is a something which has there is one uh, cycle one cycle here which has length at least three let's first deal with the uh, with the, the uh, with the first case that is all sigma is a transpositions in this case of course k has to be two because sigma is an even permutation and uh, uh, like earlier uh, so uh, uh, since n is greater or equal to 5 we must have a third element we must have a fifth element earlier when n equal to 5 this was the unique fifth element but now there could be plenty of choices for e which you choose uh, that is a material so just choose a fifth element e and uh, con consider tau to be cde once i con once i take this conjugation I get uh, uh, like as uh, as earlier a b is not going to be touched at all so this c d will be changed to d e and of course the transpositions which are present here are also going to be changed accordingly okay so now uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, the the points uh, the points which the uh, the points other than a b c d and e which are fixed by sigma so if you consider any point other than a b c d which is fixed by sigma so that point is again going to be fixed by the uh, fixed after being so that point is going to be fixed after the conjugation by tau uh, as well okay so now when i multiply this by sigma inverse then what will happen uh, so uh, certainly this is not going to be identity because uh, certainly is not going to be identity because it if you see that it sends e to c so since this moves e this cannot be identity of course it ha it has to be from n because uh, this is from n so this is a non identity element of n and uh, it has to fix both a and b so uh, so uh, what we have here is the following that uh, uh, the uh, yeah so we we get a non identity permutation in n which fixes a and b uh, i have to just argue why the, the why this is the correct choice uh, in the sense that this permutation fixes more points than that of sigma this is precisely because of the following that is the points which are fixed by sigma so here the points which are fixed by sigma one uh, and the points which are fixed by sigma tau sigma inverse they can differ just by one right because uh, the point I mean, like i don't know anything about e e might be fixed by sigma e may not e may not be fixed by sigma so 
the points other than a b c d e which are fixed by sigma uh, the set of points might be just uh, the, the number of points such points might be uh, uh, might be just uh, i mean equal or less than equal to the number of points fixed by sigma and if it is strictly less then the uh, then the difference will be one that is namely this point e so while considering the points other than a b c d which are fixed by sigma you might have uh, reduced uh, by one but now here at the end you you get two more additional points which are getting fixed by sigma so therefore which are being fixed by this permutation so uh, all total you get one more all total you get at least one uh, at least uh, one uh, more point than uh, that of uh, the fixed points of sigma i repeat try to understand that uh, uh, the points other than a b c d e which are fixed by sigma they are also fixed here okay so now when i multiply sigma inverse here then certainly those points are going to be fixed and on the top of that two additional points will be added okay but uh, while considering the points uh, while while, while uh, cons uh, uh, taking e uh, under the consideration we might have uh, we might have excluded we might have excluded uh, uh, that uh, we might have excluded uh, uh, the set of points fixed by sigma by one but uh, 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 at the end here uh, i mean since we gain by two so ultimately we have more points which are being fixed by this permutation non identity permutation uh, more points okay so yeah just i argued that uh, it fixes more points than uh, sigma so in this case we arrive at the con at contradiction now uh, let's deal with the other case uh let's do deal with the other case here uh, any at least one sigma i has le length at least 3 all right so therefore uh, sigma will look like this so here uh, my, we claim that uh, there must be two more points which are moved by sigma so why so this is precisely because of the following so first of all uh, having i mean it's not difficult to see that there is one more point which uh, which is moved by sigma because if there is no other point uh, than abc which uh, has been moved by sigma then sigma would be just abc but uh, as i have said that uh, uh, we, we we will be proving by uh, the statement by contradiction so sigma cannot be a three cycle so of course there there has to be a fourth point d now what about uh, sigma d either sigma d can be an, a fifth element e other than a b c d or sigma d can be a if sigma d is e then again sigma has to move e so thus we get five and thus we get two more uh, points which are being moved by sigma if sigma d is e, a then uh, then sigma will look like this now uh, uh, there has to be a point e which is moved by sigma because otherwise sigma will be just this four cycle a b c d but that cannot happen because this is not even a this not even uh, lie uh, this not even uh, lies in a n so even in this case we must have a po fifth point e which is moved by uh, sigma so thus we have argued if this is the situation then there will be two more points which are being moved by sigma namely d and we do have denoted them by d and e so as earlier we consider uh, uh, tau to be c d e and uh, take the and uh, look at this so the points which are being fixed by sigma exactly those points are going to be fixed by sig fixed uh, uh, even fixed by uh, yeah so the points which are which are being fixed by sigma those points will be fixed by this permutation as well 
and then finally when with that i can i multiply sigma inverse then of course the points which are fixed by a sigma they will be fixed here but in addition to that uh, but in addition to that we'll get one more extra fixed point so uh, like namely this uh, a okay let me repeat so the points which are fixed by sigma those points are fixed by sigma tau tau inverse okay now with sigma tau tau inverse when i multiply by sigma inverse so of course the points which have been fixed earlier by sigma they will also be fixed even in this product but we see that uh, since uh, 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 while conjugating by cde a has not been touched so this uh, will uh, this will fix a in addition so this is this fix so this uh, so this permutation fixes more points than sigma and it's easy to see that this permutation is not identity because uh, like it it doesn't fix b uh, it it sends uh, it sends b to sigma inverse d but b is actually sigma inverse c so therefore uh, b, this permutation doesn't fix b so therefore this cannot be identity so thus in this case uh, uh, we indeed find a homomorph uh, find a permutation which fix more number of points than that of sigma and this is a non identity permutation in l in n therefore we ha do have a contradiction okay so let me again uh, before going ahead let me try to explain the, uh, the 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 contrast between these two cases in this case uh, so the points which are being fixed by sigma so while take uh, while uh, uh, taking e under consideration we might have to exclude e from the previous list so that might have reduced the previous list that is the list of points which are fixed by sigma so after conjugation we might have reduced that list by one but when i multiply by uh, multiply by sigma inverse then i mean earlier we might have reduced by one but now once we gain two more points so ultimately we are getting more number of fixed points than that of sigma but here no such complication is there here the points which are fixed by sigma are also fixed by tau sigma tau inverse and then finally when we multiply by sigma inverse uh, multiply that by sigma inverse so the the points which have been which have been fixed so far they will also be fixed and in and in addition we'll get one more fixed point okay so that's the proof uh, of uh, simplicity of uh, an when n is get n is greater equal to 5 is uh, uh, complete and uh, Okay, so I would like to make the following remark that uh, uh, through uh, that I said that in the list of uh, in the list of ANs for which in the list of AN when uh, for we yeah the list of ANs which are simple I have uh, excluded uh, n equal to four. So it's very natural to ask what happens to a four. Actually, a four is not simple. It's easy to see that a four consists of the a normal sub non-trivial and improper normal subgroup. And as I already said, when uh, n is three, then a three is uh, a three has order three. Therefore, uh, a three is obviously simple. All right. So uh, again, let again recall that. Uh, uh, the first isom from the first isomorphism theorem, uh, we see the immediately that uh, uh, a has because this since the sign character is uh, homo onto homomorphism is an onto homomorphism, so the index of a n in S n is two. Therefore, the order of a n is uh, just the half of the order of S n. Okay, so S three has order six. A three will be having order three, and therefore A three has to be. Uh, isomorphic to z modulo 3z okay at this point i would i would like to leave the following exercises to you so uh, this k4 which we have mentioned the here that uh, is a normal subgroup of a4 uh, the exercise uh, says that this is not only normal in a4 it's also normal in s4 
okay and the quotient group s4 modulo k4 uh, what's the order of this quotient group the order is just uh, uh, 6 uh, 6 uh, 24 by 4 so this is 6 so it can be uh, it can be proved i am sure that you must have uh, proved this earlier if you haven't done it yet you can do it uh, right now as an exercise so uh, I mean, uh, up to isomorphism, there can be only two groups of order 6. One is the cyclic one, that is Z modulo 6Z, the other one is S3. And in this case, uh, the, in this case, this group is not going to be cyclic. Uh, this is what uh, you have, this is what you have to, uh, is left to you as an exercise. And from that, it follows that this quotient group is nothing but, uh, I, uh, is nothing but, uh, S3 up to isomorphism and the other, other exercise is uh, that uh, this K4 so K4 is a I mean K4 is a normal subgroup of A4 other than and the trivial one and A4 so this exercise says that this is the only such normal subgroup of A4 okay all right I will go ahead so this uh, this uh, uh, theorem that we have proved has uh, a very wide range of applications. I will just mention uh, two such things. I will just mention two such things in this lecture and you will see more later on in this course. So the first uh, uh, corollary that uh, I, I want to draw is the following that when n is at least 5, the only normal subgroups of Sn are the trivial one, An and Sn. So how to prove that? That's not difficult to prove. So we start with a normal subgroup N, uh, which is non-trivial and proper. We will show that N will be, uh, this N will be An. So we directly use for second isomorphism theorem. This leads us here. The simplicity of a now tells us this has to be either trivial or n so let's deal with the first case if this is trivial then uh, any non-identity element of n must be an odd permutation right and now you see that if this is trivial then this side is a n okay and uh, uh, and uh, on the other hand this low what about this group this is a group since n does not so n is a non-trivial normal subgroup which does which has trivial intersection with n so therefore this uh, strictly contain this subgroup strictly contains n so that means it has no choice other than sn so therefore this is sn this is by the so sn modulo n is isomorphic to n therefore that forces and that the order of n has to be 2. So n must be of this form 1 comma sigma where sigma is the non-identity element. Yeah, n must be of this form 1 comma sigma. Okay. And remember that n is a normal subgroup. So that means uh, if you take any permutation tau, tau sigma tau inverse has to be inside n. So that cannot be identity because then sigma would be identity so this has to be sigma itself so uh, n being a normal subgroup of order 2 that forces that its non-identity element namely the sigma commutes with every permutation right this is what we have okay i will show that that uh, this is not possible so how to show that so since sigma is not identity, so there is a point A which is not fixed by sigma. So let's uh, so yeah. So uh, sigma A not is not equal to A, and uh, since n is greater equal to five, we can find the third point C. Now we consider this transposition C sigma A. Uh, it's easy to see that uh, C sigma A. This transposition does not commute with uh, does, uh, so it's easy to see that uh, sigma does not commute with this transposition because in one hand this transposition uh, I mean uh, the so here th this so this sends uh, a to c and this sends a to sigma a okay 
so sigma does not commute with this so uh, therefore we uh, does arrive at a contradiction that uh, shows that the intersection here cannot be trivial so let me again quickly repeat the argument so since n is a normal subgroup of order 2 it follows that its non identity element must commute with every permutation right so then we uh, explicitly uh, found with then we have found a permutation uh, that doesn't commute uh, permutation which does not commute with uh, sigma okay so therefore this th this intersection has to be a n okay now intersection is a n means uh, a n must be a subgroup n must be contained inside n okay and uh, remember that uh, n has index 2 in sn so therefore there cannot be any there cannot be any proper subgroup uh, any proper subgroup strictly containing n and st strictly contained in sn okay so immediately it forces n has to be a n and uh, thus uh, we prove uh, thus uh, this corollary is proved uh, here also i would like to give you this this exercise that uh, in fact uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, not if you have observed this argument here then you see that the same argument in fact the verbatim repetition Pro, uh, yields uh, verbatim repetition uh, uh, gives a proof of the fact that when for any n greater equal to 3 uh, center of uh, sn is trivial so here what we have actually done is uh, if uh, sig uh, n is a normal subgroup of order 2 then the sigma has to be uh, uh, sigma has to lie in the center sigma has to lie in the center of sn this is what we actually argued because center is precisely those elements which commutes with every other elements of sn then we proved uh, we we showed that by uh, uh, by uh, finding a suitable element that this does not happen so basically if you just uh, uh, consider if you just repeat this argument verbatim here you can prove this and furthermore, uh, when n is greater at least four, center of a, a center of a n is also trivial. So that also can be proved by similar uh, argument by a similar argument. Okay, now uh, let's uh, come to the second corollary. The second corollary says when n is at least four, uh, there cannot be any onto homomorphism from S n plus one to S n. There's actually uh, uh, quite obvious because if phi is an onto homomorphism then uh, using first isomorphism theorem we find that uh, this factor group is isomorphic to sn so this forces that the the normal subgroup car phi of sn plus 1 will have order n plus 1 since n is at least 4 n plus 1 is at least 5 now uh, we have a complete list of normal subgroups of uh, sn plus 1 in this case and in that list you see there is no normal subgroup with that order so this shows that there can uh, the existence of such a phi is not possible okay so i will end this lecture with this uh, exercise that uh, the statement of this corollary so here we said that when n is at least four then there cannot be any onto homomorphism from sn plus one to sn this statement does not hold if n equal to three so in other words uh, there is there exists a onto homomorphism from s2 to uh, s4 to s3 and let me give you a hint how to con uh, how to find uh, how to get this homomorphism so uh, this remember this uh, that uh, this exercise from this exercise uh, we up i mean uh, from this exercise we, uh, we obtain that this is isomorphic to s3 and now from s4 to this quotient group you have onto homomorphism so this onto homomorphism namely the quotient map uh, and if we compose that with the isomorphism uh, then this composition yields a onto homomorphism from S4 to S3. 
that uh, that's how you can that's how uh, we can show that the statement of this corollary is uh, false when n equal to 3 okay so with that i will finish this lecture